A Tall and Small Collection, Chapter 8, When Luck Runs Out It had been just over a week since their last borrowing trip. Zoran had taken his brothers out one other time, but only to help him gather and bring back a few building supplies from the older woman's apartment. He let them wander under the cabinets, even though the door was closed. If the door had been open, Zoran wouldn't have let them come out. The cat was probably still angry at him after all. It was at the end of that week when Soren noticed he wasn't quite feeling himself. His head ached after a few hours of him working. His limbs responded sluggishly, and he couldn't shake the chill from the other morning. To compensate, Soren tried drinking more water and resting, but there were just so many things to do. Soren hadn't even felt alert enough to go borrowing for food. There were enough rations in their storage space for about three weeks if they rationed carefully. Still, the eldest brother knew it wouldn't last. Another influx of mice had made a horrible draft in the walls. Sorin, Dorian, and Ray managed to find the hole, but could only place some thick cloth over the area until they could find better building materials. Because of the hole and the dangers associated with sleeping on the ground floor, Sorin wanted to scout around and find a better place to call home. He considered finding a place near the ceiling and in between multiple apartments, but Soren hadn't had the chance to check. Another move wasn't optimal, but the argument to stay weakened by the hour. They needed to find a proper home, but Soren feared he was getting sick, and so he postponed the search for now. Plus, Soren had committed to lining the walls with thread to help his brothers get from place to place. Unfortunately, the halls were more than the thread he currently possessed, and his pounding head wasn't helping. He had only managed to lay thread from camp to all of the entrances that were safe in the older human's apartment. Dorian and Ray were obviously worried about their older brother. They asked him frequently if they could help in any way, or if he wanted them to do a task instead. They even asked if they could go borrowing again in the apartment they went to first with the bags of chips scattered about. Soren, with a weak but thoughtful smile, would always respond the same way. Focus on your training. Work on sprints and your climbing. Braid this thread so you have a strong borrowing line for repelling. Think about the things we need. We'll go borrowing together soon. I'm just a little tired and under the weather. Soren knew Ray and Dorian were safe and the confidence they were gaining from two simple borrowing trips was astounding. Still, Soren didn't want them to go on their own. They were too young. They hadn't had enough experience. They hadn't been placed in a dangerous situation, and they didn't know how to respond to an emergency. Soren knew he couldn't protect his brothers from the world forever, but he couldn't bring himself to send them into the world without knowing he had done everything to prepare them. For now, he could protect their innocence and shield them from the dangers of the world. There would be a time later for them to learn about the dangers of the world. It was just over a week now, and Sorden hadn't gone borrowing for food in that time. Not only had he not gone borrowing, but he was still feeling poorly. Today seemed to be worse than before. His body visibly shook if he weren't concentrating, and he had to squint so the light wouldn't hurt his eyes. Mind slightly foggy, Soren decided he would finish laying the last line to the older human's apartment and try to sleep off whatever was plaguing him. He ruffled his brother's hair before setting out, noting the concerned look in their eyes before leaving them to work on their own thread lines for their hooks. This was a few hours ago. In the meantime, Soren slowly laid the remainder of the line. The eldest borrower wished he could move faster but he felt like he was moving around in a fog. Soren was forced to take a few moments to shrug off the shaking and to keep his head from swirling. After finishing, Soren walked back slowly, his feet carrying his aching body mechanically back to camp. The mouse pelt on his shoulders was keeping him warm, but only barely. He was ready to curl under the blankets and sleep for the rest of the day. He had probably pushed himself to a headache already. Soren saw the corner of the wall, knowing their camp was mere feet away. Thank goodness. 
He was looking forward to a nice long rest when something pricked him as odd. There was no sound. There was nothing. On days he went out, his brothers usually hung near the edge he left so they could greet him. Even if they didn't see him, Soren could often hear Dorian and Dre in debate or discussion back at camp. His heart began to pound in his chest. His chest tightened, and his eyes, blurry moments before, were now sharp and wide awake. Soren's pace increased to a quick jog. He rounded the corner. The camp didn't seem disturbed, which was the first thing he noticed. There were no new holes in the walls, and there was no evidence of a struggle or wreckage, so mice were ruled out. Everything was tidy and put up, so they weren't organizing supplies. He did notice their bags, hooks, and lines were missing. Were they further down the hall, training? Soren was about to call out when he spotted Brady sitting against the baseboard near their food storage space. It looked like he was counting or taking stock of their supplies. Maybe he would know where the boys were. Brady, said Soren stiffly. The boys' father barely turned his head to acknowledge Soren. Where are Dorian and Ray? Brady didn't answer, almost acting as though he hadn't heard Soren. Brady, said Soren forcefully, making Brady snap out of whatever stupor he was in. We're gonna need some more supplies soon, muttered Brady, absentmindedly. Frustrated, Soren stormed up to Brady, a trembling, threatening to take his voice and his patience. Brady, where are Dorian and Ray? Soren demanded. Brady stopped what he was doing and made fleeting eye contact with Soren, his pale blue eyes mocking him. They went out, he replied quietly. Out, out with... Soren's foggy mind put it together, and his stomach dropped. You mean borrowing? Brady nodded once. They wanted to resupply and know you're not feeling well, Brady responded. Soren's head swirled. To keep from falling over, he stumbled to the side and pressed himself against the wall. And you let them go on their own? Soren's voice was a mixture of a cracked growl and sheer panic. You've taken them out multiple times. I thought it would be okay. It's just a quick run. They were going where they borrowed before. That apartment to the left, said Brady. His voice, usually aloof, finally began to seem concerned. Seeing Soren's reaction made his pale blue eyes begin to fill with concern. Soren, on the other hand, could barely breathe. A crushing feeling was engulfing his chest and his lungs. I never took them to the apartment to the left. We've only been to the one on the right. The one on the left is... Soren felt nausea seize his insides. He knew where they had gone, and it was the wrong way. The fighting humans, that man and woman, the ones who are always bickering and shouting, that's where they went! Soren's feet could not carry him fast enough. He thrust himself off of the wall and began sprinting as fast as his legs could manage. To his surprise, Brady began to follow, though he was significantly slower than Soren. Even when I'm sick, he still can't keep up thought Soren bitterly. Every pounding step sent a throbbing pain through Soren's head, but he didn't care. He had to get there. He had to protect them. Soren's lungs screamed in agony, desperate for air, as he rounded the corner to the final stretch. He could see a light halfway across the wall, the familiar light of an uncovered electrical socket. It must have gone in through there. Soren didn't slow down. He sprinted faster and faster, slamming into the wall and throwing himself outside into the human world outside the walls. He emerged by the kitchen table, reminiscent of his first trek to that apartment. Soren didn't have time to worry about whether the humans were present or not. If he remembered what day it was, the humans should be out, and he had to trust he was right about this. He followed the baseboard and peered out beyond the table. There they were. Both birds were here. They were on the other side of the kitchen by the trash can. Soren's relief was completely overridden by a sinking, panicking, gut-wrenching punch when he analyzed the scene in front of him. Doreen and Ray were standing mere inches from a snappable mousetrap. 
It was locked and loaded, ready to sprint into action. There was a cube of something small on the tra trigger. It was undoubtedly food, and they were falling for the trick that lured so many mice to their demise. Why hadn't he told them about these traps sooner? A desperate shout caught in Soren's throat. He wanted to shout to them. He wanted to call their names to tell them to stop. But his numbed mind wouldn't let him. Instead, he acted on pure instinct. Disregarding any potential hazards and possible nearby humans, Soren sprinted out into the open straight for his brothers. Everything happened too quickly for Soren to process it. Soren sprinted across the tiles, making it from one side of the narrow kitchen area to the other in record time. Ray spotted him first, but Dorian didn't notice as he leaned over the trap, arms extended to grab the bait. Before Dorian's hand could reach out, Soren was upon them. Soren grabbed the back of Dorian's shirt and threw him backwards with all his might. Dorian was thrust backwards away from the trap safely, landing several inches away on the ground. Soren, on the other hand, had come to the end of his luck. All of those narrow misses had saved up for this one massive blow. The momentum of him running in a dead sprint, combined with the force of throwing his brother backwards, left Soren off balance. He stumbled forward. His sluggish movements kept him from catching his weight. He tried to angle his fall, but it wasn't enough. His left pant leg caught on the tripping mechanism, mixed with a breathless moment as he fell. The sound of Soren hitting the ground was followed by an ear-deafening whir, a thunderous crack, and the snap of a mouse trap. There was a moment, only a moment, of complete and stunned silence before Soren's sharp cry of pain filled their ears. Soren did his best to stifle the shriek by shoving his fist into his mouth. Reactively, his body began shuddering and shaking while tears gathered in his eyes. He sucked in breath after breath as his vision swirled while the sickening taste of acid rested in the back of his throat. In that same moment, both Dorian and Ray suddenly realized what had happened and were mortified. Soren! Dorian and Ray flew to their brother's side near his face. Based on the look on Ray's face, Soren could tell the injury was bad. Really bad. Soren didn't want to know. He couldn't bring himself to look over his shoulder at what he might find. Instead, he focused on his brother's pale faces. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Dorian cried over and over, hesitating and unsure of what to do. His eyes darted from Soren's pain-twisted face to the leg snapped beneath the metallic mousetrap bar. I, 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 I don't know what to do. Dorian's eyes filled with tears, as did Ray's eyes. Soren focused on his breathing. He felt his body exerting its control, trying to make him fade. No, I can't. Not yet. I have to get out of here. I have to get Dorian Ray out of here. Nausea plagued him and caused his thoughts to swirl. His leg burned and throbbed with every beat of his heart. His body convulsed and shuddered relentlessly, but he was still in control of his mind. Yes, okay, Soren managed to say through gritted teeth. Not your fault. I, I didn't mean we wanted to. We were just trying to, Ray stammered, collapsing to his knees. I know. Soren managed to muster. Pain throbbed from his entire leg, each heartbeat intensifying the pain. He tried breathing a little faster as the edges of his vision clouded over black. I need you to, to stay focused. <clears throat> Can you do that? Both Dorian and Ray's eyes were gushing with tears while they tried to contain their running noses with hefty sniffles, but they managed to nod. Good. Now is... Soren had to brace himself for the answer. His ears were beginning to ring, making it difficult to hear. He tried popping his ears, but it didn't work. He would just have to focus on hearing past the ringing. Is my leg still there? Soren could have leapt for joy at the subtle nod of his brothers. Broken, not gone. I can work with that. Good, he sighed, forcing more air into his lungs. His body shuddered again as a cold sweat began coating his body. Now this is important. 
carefully. See if you can lift up the bar. Stand on the board and lift. Just be careful and don't grab my leg. They nodded obediently and shakily stood. Soren could see in their eyes that the injury was a bad one. He tried shaking his thoughts away, but it was of little use. He felt them step onto the wooden platform. The slight movement sent his mind reeling with pain, involuntarily making him gasp and grit his teeth. Soren dug his nails into his palm as he clenched his fists. Just then, he felt the pressure on his leg begin to lessen, followed by the sounds of his brother struggling. Lift harder, said Dorian with strained difficulty. I'm trying, Ray wailed, his clouded eyes closing tight as he lifted. Try as they might, the boys could not budge the bar more than a few millimeters off of Soren's leg. The spring was too strong and had their eldest brother locked in place. Soren wasn't able to turn and see their faces, but could hear them starting to sob uncontrollably. Dorian, Ray. Soren was beginning to have a hard time focusing. The ringing in his ears made everything sound far away. He pulled his attention back from his body to his brothers. His brothers slunk back to face him. They knelt by him and inched forward until they were practically curled up by his shoulders. Soren tried to ignore the blood on their hands and the defeated look in their eyes. It's going to be okay. What happened? Soren couldn't believe the relief he felt at hearing Brady's voice coming from behind them. It, it, it was my fault. I made Soren trip. It... Doran began bawling again. With what little concentration Soren could muster, he reached out and grabbed his brother's hands. It's not your fault, said Soren as he fought off another wave of nausea. We're going to fix this. Brady's going to help me, right? Soren could guess the face Brady made based on his brother's reaction, which was hopeless despair. Soren was given no warning as Brady stepped onto the piece of wood and pulled at the bar. His nerves screamed in protest. A pinching, burning sensation swelled in his leg and shot adrenaline into his brain. Unfortunately, Brady wasn't trying to lift the bar off of his stepson. Instead, he gave a no-warning test pull to see how difficult it would be to free Soren's leg. Soren, I, I don't know. Brady began to mutter. Soren cut him short. You're going to get me out of here. I know it. Soren's brave face was starting to slip further into the bliss of darkness. The determination in Soren's voice brought a flicker of hope to Dorian and Ray's eyes, but it did not last. There was a sound coming from the other room that sent chills down Soren's spine. It was the familiar sound of grinding and whirring mechanical gears coming from behind the door leading out of the kitchen into the garage. Soren knew the sound, and Brady knew enough to know what it meant. The humans were home. Sheer panic filled Dorian and Ray's faces and made tears spill from their eyes down their cheeks. They looked to their father for a fleeting moment before looking back to Soren for reassurance, a guidance, anything to help them get out of this situation. Soren felt his insides drop. He was trapped, and there wasn't a moment to lose. Heart racing, temple pounding, and vision continuing to blur, Soren turned to his brothers and looked them dead in the eye. You two need to run, said Soren. He kept his voice as steady as he could while looking them in the eyes. Their moods shifted immediately. What? No, we're, we can't leave you. We won't leave you, sputtered Dorian. Don't make us leave, Soren, sobbed Ray. Soren stared at his brothers harshly. It killed him to look at them this way, but he needed to, them to know he was serious. You promised me you would listen to what I told you to do when we're out here borrowing. You said you would trust me and listen to what I said, and I said run, he said sternly. Soren felt his body shudder violently again as he gripped his brother's hands tighter. Don't make this tough. What if... No, you're getting out of this. Don't scare them. He softened his voice and tried his best to force a smile. Don't worry about me. I'm going to be okay. 
said Soren. His trembling voice was measured and sounded close to normal. Brady is going to get me out. We'll be right behind you. But for right now, you need to run and hide in the walls back at camp, okay? Dorian and Ray looked into their brother's eyes. I'm sorry, muttered Dorian. Soren shook his head. Don't be. It's not your fault. Now, go. With a reluctant nod and a sniff, the boys pressed their foreheads to his, stood, and started running for the wall as fast as their little legs could carry them. Brady and Soren were alone now. Soren craned his neck and could see the expression on Brady's face, which was one of pure mortification. The sound of the car rolling into the garage and turning off was perfectly clear to both of them now. The grinding, whirring gears of the immense door started up again. They didn't have much time. Brady! Soren called his name several times to get his attention. We don't have a lot of time. Pull up on the bar. Brady didn't move. He stood there, frozen stiff, and eyes locked on the door leading into the kitchen, where the grinding sounds were. Brady! Soren could see in his peripheral vision that Brady had stepped off of the mousetrap now and was inching away from Soren. It was then that Soren knew what was happening. No. No, he's not. He's not going to. Soren thought. He's too terrified of being seen again. He's he's going to leave me. I, I can't, muttered Brady. It's too heavy. A sickening rage overwhelmed Soren as he shouted after Brady. You didn't even try. Brady, listen to me. We don't have time to debate this. I can't do this on my own. I need you to try. For Dorian and Ray, I need you to try. Soren couldn't believe what he was saying. Brady had taken a few more steps into the open back toward the safety of the wall socket on the other side of the room. They heard the jingling of keys. There were seconds left to save him. Soren's vision swam as he fought another pang of nausea. He slammed his fist into the ground as if it helped him stay connected to his conscious self. His head was starting to throb painfully. You're right. I do need to try. Soren heard Brady mutter. I can't save you, but I'll try and do what I can for my sons. I haven't been there for them. You help me see that. I can do better now. Soren felt his jaw drop. His insides churned while his vision blurred again. He gasped for air as another wave of throbbing pain injected itself into his thoughts. The cold sweat returned, racking his body with a bout of shivers which made him accidentally twitch his leg. He cried out again in pain, wincing as the tears fell onto his hands. Soren wasn't one to cry, but his body now had a mind of its own. Once completely in control, Soren's body began to seize the opportunity and drag him into darkness. His thoughts spilled from his mouth involuntarily in a final, desperate attempt to draw Brady back. Don't! You can't leave me here! Dorian and Wright, they won't make it! You know what they'll do to me! I'm sorry was Brady's only response. His brothers, the only two people who mattered anymore, were going to be left in the hands of an incompetent fool. How would they survive? Would they survive? What was going to happen to them? And what about him? These humans were constantly fighting. What were they going to do to him? Cage him? Kill him? Soren watched as Brady ducked into the walls and secured the electrical cover over the entrance. It felt like he took the last lifeline with him, condemning Soren to his fate. There were several seconds, several precious seconds, where Soren was left completely alone. It was that silence that brought forth that single, terrible notion he had suppressed until this point in time. He was probably going to die. This was it. Soren heard the jingle of keys hit the kitchen counter as his body exerted its control over his mind. His body shook violently from exhaustion and stress. Cold chills coated his face and torso. If he had had something heavy for lunch, it would have made a reappearance. Instead, he gagged a few times. 
The involuntary thrashing sent waves of new, searing pain into his mind. His vision swirled and began to blacken, but not before he caught a glimpse of the woman's shadow over, casting his frame. He gave into the darkness, slipping quietly away to an end he did not know.